Welcome everyone to another episode of Minecraft. We've updated to classic 0.0.13a underscore 03, and this episode we'll actually be playing in two different versions. So far, we've been doing one version per episode, but this isn't a strict rule, and as we'll see, these two versions are extremely similar. This is the first version that has its original files archived online. So far, we've been playing on the 2013 re-releases from Mojang. And with these 2013 re-releases, they also included another classic 13a underscore 03 that behaves identically, but has the smallest differences in the files. Let's take a look at these differences. I have both the jars open with JDGUI. On the left side, I have the original jar, and on the right, I have the 2013 re-release. This includes all the code, and one of the changes that this update has brought is that now all the code is obfuscated, which basically means that all the names of the classes and methods have been replaced with meaningless letters. This makes it harder to steal the code. But if you open up the code of the actual game, you can see they're exactly the same. So the game behaves exactly identical in both versions. The only difference from these two versions is in the meta information folder. The original release only had this manifest.mf file, and the 2013 release had this file as well. But as you can see, the 2013 release had many more lines, with SHA hashes. Only the first three lines are the same. The 2013 release's meta information folder also had two new files, this RSA signature and the signature file, with even more hashes, and it shows that they were using Java 1.6.0 build 33 that came out in 2012. Back in our world, still in the original release, to discuss the changes this update has brought. Not many. We just saw that the code is now obfuscated. Another change is that when we load a world, Steve's no longer spawn. The Steve's will only spawn when the G button is pressed now. Another change is that escape can now exit this menu in addition to bringing it up. And in this escape menu, the save level button and the load level button actually do something now. Right now, if I click it, it's going to give the failed the load levels message. But to fix this, we're going to transition to a new launcher called Betacraft. And since we're already changing launchers, we're going to go ahead and make the update to launcher version of classic 13a underscore 03. Goodbye, original version, and hello, launcher version. We're on Betacraft now, which is an amazing launcher wrap that will keep the vanilla jar, but now it will allow us to connect to proxy servers to save our worlds. Among other features, like setting to full screen, which has hopefully improved the video quality. A link to Betacraft's website is in the description. But now if I go to the save level list, we can now see I have three test worlds here, and the S is having a rendering font problem right now, so there's a little blue pixel and a black pixel above it. But I'm going to go ahead and click this, and now we can enter a level. We can save Minecraft on the internet, which is how Minecraft levels were originally saved. So if I type here, you can see if I'm using the S's, there's the blue pixel. And this is strange. You can only save if there's at least two letters. So if there's only one letter, right now the save button is grayed out. But there's definitely some bugs in here. So if I just hold down the S button, <laughs> it just goes out of the box. That box is not confining the text at all. And another issue I found when I was just typing characters is this starting curly brace has zero width. So if I type that and then type another button like B, you can see it just writes straight into it. Here's it, and then I'm going to type I. And it's even more funny, if I just keep writing the starting curly braces, it just makes a solid line. So no width, it just prints right after it. And we can get the solid line that goes straight out of the box. Now I haven't tried saving this yet, so if I click save, let's see what it looks like in the save levels. There! <laughs> you can see it turns yellow. This is a line. I wonder how much longer I can make that. Um, another issue is when you're trying to save it here in the interlevel name 
you can't press escape to leave it. You can escape from the save level list or from the load level list, but from the enter level name, if you press escape, it just won't exit. All right, I'm holding down the starting curly brace. Let's see how much longer that has made it. If we go to load level, there, <laughs> it's just a solid line across the whole screen. That's funny. There's also yet another bug in the save level list where if you're going to type the name and then you cancel, all the text in the boxes disappear except that that's hanging out. But if I click on any of these, it'll go back to the name. Next up, I want to do some math. I know math isn't for everyone, but I think this is a pretty fun visual proof of the sum of squares. So what I have laid out here is 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and we're going to n squared, however many squares we want to add together. So we're going to sum them together, and we want some formula to do this. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take these layers and stack them together. So all I've done is move them. So that's 1 squared up at the top, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and then the n squared base. I've just moved them into this pyramid. And next up, we're going to multiply this by 3. And here are the two new copies. The next up is the fun part, where we're going to rotate these pieces together into one rectangular prism. I've moved the cobblestone figure up on top of the dirt now. And next up, I'm going to move the plank one. Finally, I've moved the plank figure to complete this rectangular prism. To get the formula, we need to calculate the volume of this prism. The volume of a rectangular prism is length times width times height. So let's find each of these dimensions. The width is n, the variable that will scale up. This width is n because this is the base of the stack of squares. The length is n in dirt plus 1 seen with this plank. And then finally, the height is more interesting because the top isn't even. Half of the blocks go up one more than the others. So this can be written as 1 half plus n. Another way of thinking of the half part is splitting the top blocks into slabs and then spreading out the slabs over here to get a perfect rectangular prism with half more than n. Now that Minecraft helped us get the formula, we're just going to do a small amount of algebra to finalize it. At the top, we have the series of squares and is being multiplied by 3. To represent the three staircase figures we created to put into the rectangular prism. Those three staircases are equal to the volume for multiplying n, n plus 1, and n plus 1 half, as we saw in game. To solve for the sequence, we divide both sides by 3. In this next step, we eliminate the fraction from the numerator by multiplying it in the denominator by 2. There we go, a formula for the sum of consecutive squares from 1 to n. Here's the work to show the formula working for n equals 5. The math section was different, but hopefully you enjoyed the proof created in Minecraft. That's the end of this episode, two updates in one. Next episode will actually change more than these did. Also, thank you for all the nice comments on the previous episode. They're very encouraging. If you liked the video, consider subscribing. Bye everyone!